Good afternoon from the European Parliament in Strasbourg. We are here to discuss animal welfare and especially the illegal trade of companion animals. 74% uh, of the EU citizens believe that our companion animals, our pets, should be better protected, especially when we try to get them. To discuss this, we have here with us our MEP, Martin Hojcik, from Slovakia. He is also our shadow reporter on an MB file that was discussed today about illegal trafficking of pets. And you are also a well-known uh, animal welfare activist. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for the First invitation. First of all, uh, what was uh, actually approved this morning? So we approved a motion for resolution uh, that is calling for the Commission to improve its action on the illegal trafficking of companion animals, so dogs and cats, uh, but also ferrets. And we're also calling on the member states to step up their act. So it's not only the Commission that needs to do something, it's also the member states. And hopefully we will see some action or we'll have to follow up and pressure them again. Which are the, the negative impact of illegal trafficking of pets? Because not all the, the breeders and all the uh, let's say companies or shops where we can actually buy uh, animals are well regulated. So those coming like in another type of like illegal trafficking and through online platforms maybe, um, which are the damages of these animals that we maybe buy cheaper because we found it online, but they may come not in a really good health status. Which, which are the dangers of illegal trafficking? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we have to realize it's about breaches of animal welfare. The animals are suffering. It's small puppies which are taken prematurely from their mothers and many of them die during the illegal transport. But it's not only about the animals, it's also about the impact on you, the humans. And that's where these animals, because they often haven't been properly vaccinated, can be carrying zoning diseases, can actually spread the germs uh, that will infect the family. And uh, there is also a potential financial consequence. So, okay, you might not get uh, sick from the animal if it's sick, but the cost associated uh, with the treatment of the animal can be very high. And last but not least, there is also a psychological trauma. Imagine that you buy online a puppy for your child, a long desired puppy, and the puppy dies because it was sick and treated very badly. It also results in a massive, child, uh, massive trauma for the children. And that's all the things we need to avoid. You experienced yourself, you saw these things happen. Can you give us an example of some illegal or some not uh, well practiced that you experienced? Well, uh, Four Post organization, when I used to work, uh, is heavily involved in fighting this illegal trade. And, for example, my colleagues uncovered uh, illegal dealers in Germany that were selling on the online platforms. And uh, a whistleblower who was a former criminal, he was basically a guy who used to traffic heroin as well as puppies. And it sounds almost absurd that, look, these are the same people, but yes. It's a trafficking, business. It's a business. And it's if you buy in Slovakia or Poland a puppy for 50 euros uh, from an illegal breeder and sell it for 500, the profit is wonderful. Uh, but sadly, the suffering is amazing. Well, amazing, massive. Yes. Uh, what other, uh, let's say, at member state level, which are, let's say, what does the EU force to the member states to actually do that now it mm -hmm. has to be reinforced obviously well we need two things we need on one hand on the member state level so our countries what they need to do is they need to have a better INR systems no one knows what is INR but it's very simple in, uh, identification and registration of both the animals as well as the breeders we need to be able to know where the animals come from and also the, the member states need to enforce the legislation in terms of the breeders themselves. So there is a sufficient control of the treatment of the animals, of how the animals are then traded, of how the animals are uh, taken care of in terms of the welfare, but also in terms of the animal health. And then what we need is because it involves a cross-border trade, and that's where we come as uh, European Parliament, that's where the Commission comes in, we need to regulate the trade across the borders because when there is a puppy being coming from Slovakia being sold in Netherlands, the people in Netherlands need to know where the origins, where yeah. does it come from, if it was properly vaccinated and should know this exactly was the breeder. So they should have the right to identify the original breeder, not just some anonymous traders on the online platforms. So it will need also involvement from the business side in dealing with this horrible trend. 
with the, with the digitalization of our commerce, now there are a lot of more, more online platforms where you can also maybe find uh, some pets to buy. How can we regulate this somehow? Because it's very easy that now at some point, from the moment that you can sell a second-hand table mm -hmm. through any website, that at some point you may find advertisement that some people are selling dogs or cats. But this, how can be regulated? Is this something that has to be regulated at member state level, like checking those websites or that seller, or is something that the EU can really do something on it? This is where um, is the core of the problem right now. The most of this trade happens online. It's not anymore, you know, a dodgy guy standing on a corner with the puppies. It's not anymore the pet shops. It's the online trade that's the primary platform for uh, the illegal uh, trade in companion animals. Now, the platforms, they need to step up their act. They need to require mandatory uh, identification. And it depends. It's something which I believe the member states can do a lot. Uh, the EU is there to set up the framework. We don't need necessarily a new EU regulation. We have luckily the animal health law which is coming into force and the animal health law should actually set up the rules that cover also the companion animals. If it's implemented right and if it's also enforced because that's also part of the problem. What do these animal uh, health laws say exactly at the moment? I mean, it was it was a, applied from 2016. It was voted. Um, but it's still going it's still it? gonna be implemented. So it's not yet mm -hmm. implemented. But that's very very important time because that's where all the implementing laws on the national level are being prepared and are being done. And that's where we also need the guidance from the Commission, saying, look, these are the type of the data we want you to, to in, uh, exchange. It was originally thought primarily for the farm animals. So there are systems on how you track the cows when they travel across the border, uh, chickens. But what we need is a system where, and that what law allows, it's just up to the commission members to do it, to cover also the companion animals. And that's very important to make sure that they are included. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are happy that anyone seen at home that is planning to maybe buy a cat or a dog, any companion pet, do it through an online website as long as it's registered and controlled. But what about adopting? I mean, if this could be an option only uh, also to kind of counterfeit these mm -hmm. options. And do you think that there are enough campaigns to promote the adoption of animals instead of buying them? I would say that, and to all of you, that uh, the adoption, the local adoption from responsible shelters is always the better choice. We need to promote it more. I'm happy that lots of the animal welfare organizations are promoting it heavily. But I hope that when you yourself will be deciding whether to buy a pet, and don't make it on an impulse, it's a very responsible decision. And the animal and you will live together hopefully, happily for years to come. So it's not a light decision, it's not a Christmas present, but then go uh, to your local shelter visit local adoption events. There are animals around you that need home, that need loving owners, and you can be one of them. You don't necessarily need to buy animal online. That's a very good message by, by Martin Hoysik. Thank you so much for your time. We will follow up on this to make sure that the animals that we may potentially buy in the future are really well regulated and the legal trafficking of them stops at uh, the maximum level possible. And all of you at home, just stay tuned to Facebook and our social media channels because we still have a lot of things to discuss during this session in Strasbourg here at the European Parliament. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.